Hi everyone, thank you for joining us today. My name is Laura Roundy and I am a travel specialist here at Global Base Camps. I hope everyone is staying healthy and coping with these difficult times as best you can. Although none of us can travel right now, we are hoping this webinar series will provide an escape and perhaps some inspiration for future travel. We are going back to our roots and focusing on some of our favorite unique and sustainable base camps or lodging properties around the globe. These special hotels, safari camps, and eco-friendly resorts play an important role in our tailor-made custom itineraries that we develop for each client. These properties also play a vital role in their local communities, whether it's hiring local staff, building schools and health clinics, or supporting wildlife conservation programs. <clears throat> Some of the more remote properties have to be very aware of their environmental impact to preserve the natural beauty of their location and to lessen any negative consequences of tourism. So that is the type of global base camp I will talk about today. When the presentation is over, there will be time for a question period. So please submit any questions using the Q&A box at the bottom of your screen, and I'll be happy to answer them as best I can. And there is a picture of me in Patagonia. So I've had a passion for travel since a young age, and I took a year off after college to backpack through Asia and Australia, New Zealand. And after some uh, false starts and on other career paths, I found my way into the adventure travel industry back in 2003. And since then, I've been lucky to travel all over the world and stay in some amazing places. And one of my favorite experiences was staying at Eco Camp Patagonia. So in April 2017, after attending a travel conference in Chile, I had the opportunity to extend my trip and spend a few days at Eco Camp Patagonia down in Torres del Paine National Park. Torres del Paine is located in southern Chile, not far from the border of Argentina, way down there on the tip of uh, South America. Torres del Paine is probably the most famous park in Patagonia, known for its stunning scenery, great hiking, glaciers, and of course those iconic three towers or Torres in Spanish, the three distinctive granite peaks that make up the Paine uh, mountain range. I was really excited to visit the park for the first time and to experience sleeping in my first geodesic dome. So Torres del Paine National Park is not the easiest place to get to, being in a remote part of Patagonia in the southern tip of South America, but of course no place uh, getting there is part of the fun and so the most folks will fly into Santiago, Chile. That's the only international airport uh, that you can land in from North America and I recommend you know spending a night or two there. There's uh, lots to do in the Santiago area, Valparaiso uh, on the coast, there's wine country nearby as well. So you can break up the journey that way. And then from Santiago, it's a direct flight to Punta Arenas, down here, a three hour flight. Or Puerto Natales uh, is another option during peak season. But there are more frequent flights to Punta Arenas, which is a pleasant enough port city and the gateway for many Antarctic cruises. From Punta Arenas, it is a five hour drive to Torres del Paine and the Eco Camp and it's just a two hour drive from Puerto Natales. Um, the other option is to fly into Buenos Aires, Argentina. And again, you could spend a few nights there before flying down to El Calafate on the Argentine side of Patagonia, which is also about a three hour flight. Uh, El Calafate might look closer to Torres del Paine on a map, but because of geography and border crossings, it does take about six hours uh, in a semi-private transfer to EcoCamp, and even longer using the regular bus service. Uh, there are no direct flights from Buenos Aires to the Chilean side down here, and vice versa if you can't fly from Santiago to, say, El Calafate. So one option that a lot of folks do if they want to see both sides of Patagonia, the Chilean and the Argentine, 
would be to fly into Santiago, do the Chilean side first, cross the border, do the Argentine side. Um, there are some national parks uh, and glaciers and things near El Calafate and El Chelton, and then fly up to Buenos Aires, spend some time there before flying home, or vice versa, of course. Uh, so the logistics can get a bit tricky, but we can help you organize all that, as well as lodging and activities on both sides. So I flew into Punta Arenas, and EcoCamp offers a shared uh, twice a day during high season shuttle service from Punta Arenas and Puerto Natales to the park and back again at the end. So they'll pick you up from both hotels in Punta Arenas and the airport. Private transfers are also available, but we really don't recommend them just to re you know lessen the carbon footprint, lower emissions, fewer vehicles. The shared transport are these comfortable minivan shuttles that hold up to 14 people and luggage quite comfortably. Uh, the five hour transfer is a long journey, but they make a few stops to help uh, break, break it up. So we, for example, stopped at a cafe in the middle of nowhere so we could stretch our legs, grab a latte, and then you stop in Puerto Natales for lunch. Um, cute frontier town, very colorful, and you can you know, a nice place to stroll and and walk around before heading to the park. And the last stop before the park that we made was at this um, Miladon Cave National Monument. And here we enjoyed a guided tour of this site, home to some interesting caves where they found evidence of extinct animals like the Miladon, which is this giant sloth bear creature, obviously just a replica. Um, in one of the caves that they've stuck there for effect, but pretty cool place and a good chance to learn a bit of history of the region and again stretch your legs. And the scenery does ramp up as you get closer to the park and you start seeing those mountain peaks and lakes. And once you arrive at Eco Camp, you realize its unique location inside the park with stunning views of uh, the three towers right behind camp. So here, right here is where Eco Camp is located. Uh, many of the hotels and lodges are located outside of the park itself. So one advantage that Eco Camp has is being inside the park borders and also close to some of the famous hiking trails. So it's near the trailhead for the tower's base trek, for example. And the only other lodge that you can see that's in this area from Eco Camp is the uh, Las Torres Hotel that's down the hill from uh, Eco Camp. And Las Torres is the more conventional lod lodging option with 85 rooms and they've got horse stables. It's a good choice for some folks, but Eco Camp with their glamping domes is definitely more unique. So here's a photo of you from Eco Camp looking down over the valley. And this is Las Torres down here. And that's just, uh, that's, that's kind of the entrance, sort of the staging area for tours in this area. And I think that's part of Las Torres as well. Um, so EcoCamp Eco first opened in 2001 and was the first hotel in the world to build eco-friendly and completely sustainable geodesic domes they became an industry leader in sustainable lodging and have won many awards. Which brings me to my next topic, sustainability. So here's a picture of one of the sweet domes, the highest category of dome. They're built on wooden platforms to reduce the uh, trauma to you know, the uh, fauna. Um, and they're built using renewable materials. No concrete is used to keep a light footprint. Uh, pine wood from local Patagonia ranches, wicker furniture, all natural fiber bedding, uh, skylights to preserve the heat from the sun during the day, insulated walls. 95% of the energy used at EcoCamp is from solar panels and hydropower. So they have four micro hydro turbines that draw water from a nearby river and 
that which is then converted into energy in a battery bank and of course the solar panels convert energy from the sun the sweet domes do have uh, low emission wood stoves and they're currently uh, converting those into pellet stoves uh, which are more eco-friendly and the bathrooms have propane heaters um, but overall they try to use renewable energy sources whenever possible and they have compost toilets all waste is composted and used for soil regeneration they even have a biofiltration dome where waste is filtered and cleaned uh, you can take a behind the scenes sort of green technology tour of these facilities and it's really quite impressive uh, so I, I do highly recommend that just hold your nose when you're checking out the biofilter uh, so no hair dryers are allowed they use too much energy um, but they do but the camp provides biodegradable soap and shampoo so there's no need to bring your own they also provide towels there is a no plastic policy so bring your refillable water bottles and they will provide the filtered water even the box lunches are stored uh, in eco-friendly metal tins now the food is as local as possible uh, they source from organic farms in Puerto Natales they also support local schools and offer a camp program for local kids there's a reforestation uh, program and you can buy local handicrafts in the gift shop dome it's really a, a remarkable uh, green tourism operation so now I will talk about some of the common spaces at eco camp these are the communal domes for dining and lounging they are all uh, the dining room and the bar lounge area are, are connected and there's an outdoor deck as well so super comfy um, colorful decor great place to hang out after a day of trekking um, all meals are included in your stay so this is where everyone eats breakfast and dinner and after breakfast there is a make your own sandwich station where you can uh, you know basically make your own lunch to pack up into the box before you go off on your daily excursion and there's that gift shop uh, with handicrafts as well as some gear and it doubles as the reception area for check-in and check-out there's a spa dome for private massages and even a yoga dome where they offer daily uh, yoga classes indoors and outdoors on the deck as well and then as far as sleeping domes there are four different types the most basic one is the standard dome standard domes are the smaller ones at 108 square feet and they do not have a private bathroom they don't have heat or electricity either um, but the shared bathrooms by gender are located nearby and they they're cozy but there are fleece blankets to provide warmth and big windows for light or stargazing at night and you can as you can see you can get they come with either one large bed for couples or two beds um, next up we have the superior domes which are larger at 250 square feet as you can see there's just a little more space to move around there's some chairs they also come with their own private bathrooms with composting toilets and propane heaters these domes do have limited electricity enough to charge your phone and camera um, and then the sweet domes are the most luxurious choice the regular sweet domes are 300 square feet they have private bathrooms with composting toilets and hot showers there's a wood stove in the main room and heat uh, propane heat in the bathroom and as you can see quite spacious lots of room to spread out and those big beautiful windows to see all the views and then families will like the sweet dome lofts which are basically two-story sweet domes 398 square feet where you have you know usually the parents sleep down below and then there's a staircase into the loft area uh, with a bedroom for the children to sleep above or it could be a group of four friends or even two very friendly couples. 
So what is there to do at EcoCamp? Well, all like the meals, all guided activities are included and most guests will stay for at least three nights since you know it does take a while to get there. Um, and there are various packages we can arrange. One of the most popular ones is the wildlife safari. This includes a daily hiking and nature walk option ranging from easy to hard. So this is a great option for folks of all fitness levels. Each day of the week has three different guided options you can join. So for example, on Mondays, you could choose between the easy three mile Laguna Azul hike or the more demanding French Valley hike or the even more challenging 14 mile Towers Base Trek. On Tuesdays, there will be three new options. Some of the more popular hikes are offered on multiple days. So just let us know if you have a particular hike that you want to include and we can plan your trip dates around uh, that activity. So groups are small with no more than 16 people per activity and a guide ratio of one guide for every six guests. And the wildlife safari is offered year round. It is a, the winter program is a modified version, but they, they are open in winter. And then another popular choice is the multi-sport uh, six day five night package and uh, each day you do a different group activity in the park one day is mountain biking one day is kayaking horseback riding and one day of trekking this is a little more challenging so there are age minimum and maximums and you should be in good physical shape the group size is a little smaller uh, of with 12 people and this is only offered during high season between the summer months of November and March. Um, since I could only be there for a few days and it was April, uh, which is shoulder season, I did a wildlife safari. And here are just some photos from my trip. I did some of the easier hikes and we had great, beautiful, clear weather most days, um, as you can see. Just stunning views, blue skies. There we're, we are having our box lunch, <laughs> with lunch with a view. Those, that is the Salta, Salto Grande uh, Falls that fall into Pijo Lake. Just really beautiful. Place. Oh, and then the final day, I did a wild horse tracking trip. This is a really unique activity, uh, right now only offered on Sundays. And the park is home to about 100 wild horses, and you track them with these amazing local guides um, who, you know, kind of know where they, where they graze, uh, and they do, I think they do use some satellite technology to help track them. So you're not guaranteed to see the horses, but um, there's also other lots, uh, you know, of course, as you're hiking, you're still seeing scenic views, and there's other wildlife in the park. You'll definitely see guanacos, which are related to the llama, and many types of foxes. There are gray foxes, red foxes. This cute baby red fox actually was hanging out at camp, because you can see the platform there for, of Eco Camp. And then there's various birds, including the South American condor and the Chilean swallow. And then another really cool wildlife option at EcoCamp is their six day puma tracking program. Pumas are mountain, South American mountain lions. There's also a two day program that you can add on to like a wildlife safari if you don't wanna do the full six, six day puma program. So you spend your days tracking the elusive puma with the help of an expert tracking team who are in constant radio contact. And you also uh, learn some wildlife photography skills. So this is an exclusive trip with a small group size, no more than five people. And there are limited departures, um, usually four or five scheduled departures a year. And then they do take private requests as well. Um, I'm not sure I would want to be that close to a mountain lion, but perhaps the perspective is 
a little off that they're not actually that close. So other options to include a stay at EcoCamp Patagonia during your Torres del Paine visit would be to include it as part of a longer trekking program for those who want you know, a little more hardcore hiking. Uh, these trips also involve some camping or staying in refugios. And a refugio is just a mountain hut. So more basic than the EcoCamp uh, style lodging. For example, the famous seven day W track or the shorter five day version where you spend one or two nights away from your dome and stay in uh, the more basic mountain huts for part of the trip. The W treks allow you to connect some of the more famous hiking trails in the national park and get further into the wilderness. And for those with more time and want even more of a challenge, the nine day Pine Circuit hiking trek is another option. Traditionally, this is an eight night tent camping experience, but you can decide to upgrade your first and last nights to stay in one of the comfy eco domes instead. And then the middle of the trip would be, you know, tent camping. Um, but we provide all the gear, the tents, and porters carry your personal and communal gear. And uh, the Pine Circuit uh, is definitely a way to get off the beaten path and practice your social distancing. Um, and then a big question that always comes up is when to go to Patagonia, the seasonality. And since it is in the Southern Hemisphere, hemisphere they have the opposite seasons as North America. So summer season, our winter is the most popular time to go when the weather is warmest between December and March. So in summer, the temperature during the day can reach into the 60s and low temperatures are down in the 40s. There can be strong winds in summer though and possible rain. So like any time of year in Patagonia, you need to bring layers and be prepared for unpredictable weather. But the peak summer months uh, can be more you know, crowded now in the park. Uh, I mean, the park is never truly crowded. There aren't that many lodging options, but some of the main hiking trails, you know, can during peak season be pretty congested these days. So we recommend going during one of the shoulder seasons. That would include spring between like mid-September to November or fall, late March and April. And as I mentioned before, like I went in April, which is uh, autumn, and though temperatures were colder, we had less wind and enjoyed some of the super clear and sunny days. Great for hiking. So winter season, May, late May to early September, is cold, but not as cold as people might think. Daytime temperatures are still in the 40s. Low temperatures are only down in the 20s, 30s. So that's warmer than uh, a Minnesota winter. EcoCamp Patagonia is open year round, though not all of the hiking programs or activities are available in the winter. But it's definitely an uncrowded and unique time to visit. Great, so that concludes my presentation. I hope you all have a chance to visit one day. Patagonia is truly a remote and special place. And thank you again for taking the time to join us. And we can open it up for questions now. So just submit. So our first question is, are there any opportunities for cultural activities? Um, not in Torres del Paine National Park itself. It's you know, definitely an uninhabited region, but when you, if you spend a little time in Punta Arenas or Puerto Natales before going into the park, you know, there are opportunities in Punta Arenas for uh, like we visited a sheep shearing event at our local ranch and um, you know, that was really fun. So there are, you know, outside of the park, there are some cultural opportunities, but not once you're at Eco Camp inside the park. Although they, they do hire, you know, a lot of local guides who can talk about, you know, Chilean culture and history and you get that uh, local vibe. Let's 
so the next question uh, is, is the trip suitable for senior citizens over 65? Uh, the, definitely the wildlife safari would be uh, suitable for seniors and, you know, does have the, the different hiking options at different levels each day. Um, some of the other trips, like the multi-sport, does have a uh, uh, age um, maximum of 65 and like because of the kayaking um, restrictions, but, you know, most of the other treks are open to to all ages, including the W treks and the Pine Circuit. Um, so the next question Do you recommend this for multi-generational families? And yes, definitely, um, you know, the wildlife safari, you, you could do with multi-generational, different ages, doing different activities. Um, the ages six and over are welcome at EcoCamp, although you have to be at least 12 to join any of the harder hikes. Um, or activities. So just the nature walks are appropriate for ages like six to 11. And uh, another question is the altitude at EcoCamp. Um, I'm not sure the exact altitude at EcoCamp itself, but one good thing to know about trekking in Torres del Paine is that it is not high altitude trekking. None of the, everything, all the hiking is below 10,000 feet. So you don't have to worry about altitude sickness and the EcoCamp itself is certainly, you know, not at altitude. Um, so that's a good question. And another question is about cost. Now that, of course, really varies a lot depending on which program you pick, which season you go in, and which dome you select. So just to give an example of the, the wildlife safari, which starts at, you know, a three-night package would be the shortest time you, we would recommend going. So that, in low season, a standard dome is around $850 per person. Um, and in high season, that goes can go up, jump up to fifteen over fifteen hundred per person. And the sweet dome would be around thirteen hundred per person in low season, and the high season a sweet dome would be like twenty three fifty per person. Now that's not just for the lodging; that includes all your meals, activities, the transfers to get there. So that's like a whole package program for for three nights. So, but it really varies depending on, you know, your dates of travel and which dome you select, and of course how many nights you stay. Um, but we, you know, we can go over all that those details with you when you, when we speak in person. So another question: Do you know whether the total eclipse this December will be visible there? That I do not have an answer. We will have to get back to Cindy on that one. Um, and then Meg asks, do you have to decide which activities you want to participate in advance or can you choose when you get there? Um, they do, you, they, they, they do have a, like, like I mentioned, a weekly menu. So on Mondays, it's just three activities as far as the wildlife safari goes. And Tuesdays, it's a different three activities. Wednesdays, a different three activities. So you don't have to choose in advance, like which of those three you wanna do. You can wait till you, you get there. And of course, weather can sometimes change what is offered um, each day. But every, every night after dinner, they, the guides kind of go over with, with everyone what, well, you know, what the three op options will be the next day and then you can decide then which, which one you'd like to do. 
But if you had a particular, like if you definitely want to do the wild horse tracking, we'd have to make sure that you'd stayed at the camp during that day of the week that it's offered, which right now are, are Sundays. So Christy has a question, uh, what is the food like and can you accommodate food allergies? Good question. The food is wonderful. Uh, a lot of, you know, Chilean recipes and South American food. Fresh, uh, a lot of organic options, vegan and vegetarian friendly. And yes, they can accommodate most food allergies. We just need to know in advance, of course. And we can pass that along to the kitchen staff. Um, let's see. Oh, <laughs> someone from EcoCamp has answered my, the Eclipse question for me. Uh, thanks, Leela. So there's uh, no, you won't be able to see the December eclipse in Patagonia, only near Pucon, which is up in the Lake District. So thanks, Leela. And the last question. Um, did you repeat the approximate price for five days? Okay. Um, I only I only mentioned a four day price, but uh, so like for four days during high season in a standard dome would be around fifteen hundred per person, and a four night a four day package in a sweet dome during high season would be around twenty three fifty per person you know, for two people sharing. And uh, we, you know, you, if you are a solo traveler, we, we, we do match people up in the standard domes. If you, if you wanna share uh, with someone of the same gender, a standard dome, otherwise there is a single supplement to have your, your own dome or to, you know, be in one of the, superior or sweet domes. But since the, you know, activities are with a group, it is a good option for, for single travelers. Uh, the shuttle, there's a question of, from Valerie of what is the cost of travel to camp, the cost of the shuttle. The shuttle is actually included in the, in the package rate of, of staying at EcoCamp. So there is no separate fee or cost of, of the shuttle. There is an additional price if you wanted, if you weren't, if you, you know, wanted a private transfer. Uh, and those I know can run, uh, I don't know the exact price, but, you know, upwards of four or five hundred dollars. It's pretty expensive to have a, a private transfer. And I don't think we have any more questions. <laughs> um, I think some of you guys asked some questions in the chat. So if we didn't get to you, we'll go ahead and follow up with you. But um, Laura, if you want to just go to the last slide for me, please. Oh, yes. Sorry. Thank you. No, you're fine. Um, thanks so much. That was awesome. Uh, looks like an incredible property uh, that I'm sure many of us are itching to visit once borders start to reopen. And thank you so much for everyone who joined in today. We really appreciate everyone continuing to show interest and support during these crazy times. Hopefully it gave you a welcome escape to your day. Um, if you have any additional questions, please don't hesitate to reach out to Laura directly. You'll see her email is up on the screen. And if you want to check out some of our other Patagonia options, we've got a lot of cool sample itineraries on our Patagonia Tours page, which you'll also find a link to. So our next webinar will be in two weeks on May 14th at this same 11 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. Um, in this webinar, our travel specialist, Val, will be taking us to another incredible Latin American destination, the Galapagos Islands. So if you're interested in that, stay on the lookout. I'll be sending out a link to register next week to your inboxes. And as I'm sure you've noticed, we also post about it on our social media. So follow us on Instagram or Facebook to stay up to date. 
Uh, thank you so much, Laura, and thank you, everyone else. I hope everyone's staying safe and healthy, and we'll see you next time. Thanks, everyone.